Pleasure to have these two guys next to me. Uh, they don't need any introduction if you know your way around sailing on TV, certainly. Uh, Loic Perron, French multi-hull master and uh, coach, performance director, jack of all trades for Artemis Racing. Loic, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you here in Lake Troncy at the Austria Cup. And Ian Percy, uh, gold medalist and, and sailing director, team boss for Team Artemis Racing as well. So, guys, you come a long way to, to, to Austria to come check out these uh, Great Cup 32s. You only got here a minute ago, but I know you've been looking at the boat a while and, and on the web. Uh, Loic, from a, as a guy who's sailed every kind of multi-hull ever built just about, what do you think of them so far? But, uh, I think they are flying, and, you know, part of the future of the multi hull stories are the flying mode, is the flying mode. We were discovering the way of flying on big boats a year ago, and that's amazing. And that's very nice, I think, to have a lot of uh, attempts like that everywhere, not only in this class, but to try to make a lot of more people flying and try to feel, to have this feeling, and, uh, and especially this class. That's a good size, maybe. It could be a nice start to have and maybe a mix between amateur and professional or something like that. It's, it's time to renew the fleet. In any case, the multi small fleet, I should say. And no, I mean, look, you've sailed, you've sailed the extreme, uh, extreme forties back in the day. Yeah. That boat's obviously getting quite old. Um, is this the next, uh, the next one to follow? You think? And can it, can it, can it do? You know, the extreme forties evolved to pretty much all pros pretty quickly. Can this boat uh, bridge that gap between the professional and the amateur high performance multi hull sailor? Maybe, maybe yes. I think it, it's quite normal to have a look to the evolution of the any kind of series like that and. You know, we were talking in the car with, with uh, Jan a few hours ago and about the, the story of this contest on one design multi -hull, and it starts in France 30 years ago with the Clairefontaine Trophy on small cats like that with a lot of guys professional coming from medalists, gold medalists like him or, or Connor, Donis Connor, Dixon everywhere and we were fighting on small boats exactly the same. One design contests are quite interesting and then it becomes a very nice story, very well uh, managed by uh, Turner with the Extreme 40 series everywhere in the world. And then after that, for sure, because these boats are interesting, they are quite stable, easy to sail. Um, they might be economical. Economical, well, that's a way to have a look to that. I yes. Mean, compared to just about anything else you can think about that yes, goes right. 40, 35 or 40 knots, I think they were at 36.7 yesterday. Yeah. Uh, what else goes that speed uh, uh, that you can afford on, you know, that costs less than a cru a, a, a month. A month <laughs> might be very, fast, very but you are, you are alone. You are alone on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, Purse, you know, you've obviously been at it hard with the America's Cup 72 for a long time and the star, the Olympics before that. Um, is this the kind of thing that could provide a cross trainer for your sailors uh, uh, for the next cup? Yeah, definitely could. And I quite like the fact there's a fun element to the racing. And I think that's what's needed. We, we, certainly myself and Loic, we've been doing serious racing, America's Cups and round the world races, Olympics for a long time. And stressful. And I think sometimes the environment where you learn, you get to know your teammates, uh, is in an environment where it is a bit more relaxed and fun. And you get to mix with your competitors who we're all friends with. But sometimes that opportunity isn't there, and I like that. That's my first impression here, a friendly group and a mixture of uh, the amateur and professional I like. And I think it's part of where we have to go as well with our sport, because economical, though you say it is, it's probably not economical to you know, most of my mates from home. So, <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, it, it is still an expensive sport, but wow, what a result it produces with, with foiling cats nowadays. Now we've only got four here. I think there's another four coming in a container fairly soon. Oh, yeah. And hopefully they, they, they move in pretty quickly after that. I guess, Loic, do you feel, you know, this story starts more than 30 years ago. It starts with Taberly, this kind of stuff, yeah, right? Not far. No, no in fact, the multi, the multi story starts because of the Transat, yes, and it starts in, in the 60s. But it starts 2,000 years ago in the, in the Pacific we want to be fair about, about the history. And then, as developed by the French throughout the second half of the yeah, 20th century. But, but the first really interesting multi was made by an American guy. And, and in fact, everything starts in, on the West Coast, really with, with a lot of routes coming from the Pacific Islands. And then with really showy design of, it's not the time if you want to do a bit of history about that, I'm quite passionate by that. But, but after that, but after that, it starts really 35 years ago in, in the main uh, district in, near uh, Boston with Walter Green, a genius, Dick Newick, 
disappeared a year ago. Yeah, it just died. And they were building small trimarans, and these trimarans were beating monohulls. And that's why, in fact, I, I will do the Rome race in a few months, a single in the transatlantic, on, on a replica. It's a great story coming up in November from this guy, I tell you what. The, because we are flying today, and because these guys, as they were pioneers, you say that, pioneers? Yeah, sure. And it's, for me, I really like to, to offer a kind of a tribute to all the history like that. If we have the chance to fly on these boats, crazy boats, maybe these ones, but especially the, the 72s and the, the next one for the Cup, that's because the history was there. It's got to make you proud because you've been a big part of that multi-hull history. That's oh, led yes. to the fact that we have a Cup. White airs, baby, but that's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes, I had the chance to be a contemporain of this history. That's crazy. Yes, I'm signing on Mutian since 30 years now. I had the chance to do my first Atlantic crossing on a wooden boat, which was a Mutian. And, and that's absolutely amazing to be part of a team, a tremendous team today, on a big machine with tremendous guys like that. And that's really a chance. I'm a lucky boy. You sure. are a lucky boy and you're the, the happiest guy in sailing. Purse, when are we going to see an Artemis racing uh, GC32 then on the line? Whoa. Well, that's why we're here to have a look at it. I mean, and to meet old friends and uh, catch up. But yeah, we're here to take a look. I mean, we've been impressed so far. And as I said, I think it's a great opportunity to get out and do some racing. There's there's not much sailing gets done in the America's Cup sometimes, and uh, we all love sailing and we, we, we like sailing as a group. Uh, myself, Nathan, Louis, Goobs, all, we we all enjoy sailing together. So. It does look like an opportunity to do that. So, so far, we've liked what we've seen. Well, hopefully, we'll get you guys out in a boat tomorrow morning and have a little fun. Uh, uh, might not be sure because we, we, we are going back home. If I'm not home, tomorrow morning. <laughs> ah, it all depends. At, at which? Nine o'clock, first start? Yeah. No, 11. you got to go sailing before the first start. Oh, maybe at also eight. We'll get you in a boat. Yeah, we'll get you in a boat. Come on. I'm sure we can sort you out. Guys, hey, thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Check him out at Artemis Racing, and uh, yeah, awesome to have you here. Thank you.